Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll. And today I'm giving you a look at a little game called Sequence Dice. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. Now, if you've been following along with the channel, you know that I'm a huge Uno fan. But what you might not know is that there's another game that gets a lot of love in my family. And it is slowly turning into a nice family of games under the same title. And that is Sequence. Now, I actually got this box when I was eh, somewhere around the age of 12 or 13. It was a Christmas gift. And it got a lot of time on the table in my family. And here, um, just a couple years ago, I actually got my hands on two player travel sequence. Um, it's a really nice travel kit and they've changed the game a little bit to accommodate two players. Then, uh, there's not a video for this yet either, but they're all coming. I recently picked up Sequence Stacks, which takes the sequencing concept, kind of mixes it with Skipbo and Uno and makes a pretty cool card game that plays on the same idea of creating numbered sequences. And of course, today I'm gonna to be showing you Sequence Dice, which takes away the cards completely and relies entirely on the roll of two six-sided dice. What's it all about? Well, let's dive in and learn how to play. Out of the box, you will receive an instruction pamphlet a game board with 36 spaces, 60 chips, there are 20 of each color, blue, red, and green, and two six-sided dice. To set up for a two-player game, each player chooses one of the colored chips and keeps them in a pile near them, and then roll both dice to see who goes first. The highest total number gets to go first. For a three player game, the third player will use the third color of chips. A four player game is played in partnerships and partners will sit across from each other and share the same colored chips. A three and four player game begins the same as a two player game. Each player rolls the dice and whoever rolls the highest number when combining the two dice gets to go first. We're gonna play a three player game for this example. Player one will be down here at the bottom of the screen with the red chips. They will roll on their turn and whatever number they roll, here they rolled a five. So you always add up the two dice and whatever that total number is, that is the value of your roll for the turn. And whatever number they roll, they place a chip on that number. A few of the numbers have a special ability, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. So here the player rolled a five, and they can place their red chip on any available five on the board. Once they have done that, their turn is over, and play passes left. The blue player has rolled a six, so they may place a blue chip on any six. So they're gonna go ahead and get right up in red's business right off the bat, and place their blue chip here. All right, the green player has rolled an 11. So let's go ahead and start talking about special powers. In this game, 11s are wild. And in case you forget, there is a reminder on the corner of the board. This means that the green player can place a chip on any number they want, even these seemingly special zones for two and 12. So they're gonna go ahead and place a chip right smack dab in the middle of the board. Their turn is over and play passes. Now let's go ahead and see what the rest of the special powers are. If a player rolls a 10, so two fives or a six and a four, they are allowed to remove one chip that belongs to their opponent. So if red rolled a 10, they can take away this blue chip right here and get it out of their face. That immediately ends their turn and play would pass. If a player rolls a two or a 12, 
they can place their chip on any of the twos or 12 spaces. Now, those spaces are special because when a player rolls a 10, they cannot remove any chips from these gray spaces. So twos and 12s are safe. Also, when a two or a 12 is rolled, that player gets to roll again and take another turn. So they rolled a five and they would be able to place a chip on a five. And that would end their turn. There are no rules against rolling twos and 12s multiple times in a row. So if a player continues to roll a two or a 12, they get to keep taking turns. If a player rolls a number that is completely covered by chips, they are able to replace one of their opponent's chips with a chip of their own. So here all the sixes are covered and we're gonna say it's red's turn. So they can actually remove the blue chip from that six and replace it with a red one. If it was red's turn and they rolled a six and they had already covered all the sixes with their chips, then they simply pass their turn. They don't get to do anything. This rule even applies to the twos and the twelves. If all of the twos are covered and a player rolls two and an opponent is covering one of the spaces, they can replace that chip with one of their own. So twos and twelves are only safe from tens being rolled. They are not safe from all of that number being covered. Play like this continues until a player is able to get a row of six chips. A sequence of six wins the game. Sequences can be up and down. Sequences can be diagonal. Or a sequence can run from left to right. In a two player game, a five chip sequence is required to win. Not six, but only five. And again, they can run left to right, up and down, or diagonally. Once a player has scored a sequence, they win the game. It only takes one to win. All right, well, that was sequence dice. Now I can tell you right off the bat that this was a winner with Christina. This is going to be seeing a lot of table time and it's, it, it's very simple, but it's in that simplicity where a lot of fun is had. There's a lot of tension with the dice roll, especially when you've got one number left and you're going to win the game and then that number is blocked by an opponent. And of course, the use of the dice removes kind of the vindictive behavior that the cards had because you're not necessarily choosing to block your opponent. You roll the dice, you happen to get that number, and then you make the most of that roll. So it's like the, the game kind of gives you permission to use those that take that action uh, without feeling quite so bad because you're like, uh, I didn't have a choice. I rolled that number and I would be dumb not to block you. And again, with the removing of the chips, not only is getting that um, the 10 awesome, especially when your opponent is just about to get a sequence and you're able to bust it up. But once all the numbers are covered, then you are, you are able to start kind of getting in there and swapping chips and really changing the state of the board. So sure, whereas sequence the card games, the classic sequence where you have a hand of cards, you play a card and you put a chip on the board, whereas that offers a little more choice, um, you know, in this game, that is replaced with more of a casino, roll the dice and hope for the best kind of feel, which is fun in its own way. If you like games like Yahtzee um, or, or games that depend more on a dice roll, then you're really going to like this because there's just, it's just a nice balanced mix of luck and take that actions or defensive actions and winning just feels so good. All right, well, that is it for now. Be sure to check out the description down below for links to riffleshuffleandroll.com, gamerules.com, and my profile over on Board Game Geek if you want to stay ahead of the curve and know what I'm playing as I play it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time, 
keep on playing.